Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. You know who it is. And uh, yeah, we're about to embark on a little list here of five awful Christmas songs because you guys, both on social media and people behind the scenes too, have been testing me and testing me and testing me because I, I've come out and I've said that I think Paul McCartney's Wonderful Christmas Time is, if not the worst, one of the worst, like top three Christmas songs of all time. Top three worst. And uh, yeah, as a result of that, lots of people have come out of the woodwork to say, not only is that song not bad, but here's a million other worse Christmas songs. And um, yeah, I've, I've just decided to dive into some tracks that are <laughs> really challenging my perceptions on how bad Christmas music can get. And I've been around a while. Uh, you would think that I've heard every awful Christmas track of all time, but no, they're, they're, st they're still making new ones. They're, they're still making them. They haven't stopped. So, all right, let's, let's just get into it. Five terrible Christmas songs. Hopefully what is going to become here a rich annual tradition over here on, uh, on the Fantano or Needle Drop YouTube channels. Let's go. Uh, first, this boy band by the name of After Romeo, who I've never heard of before. This is first exposure for me on this track, and I'm sure it will be for a lot of you as well. Um, this one comes directly from my boy Austin, who I told uh, behind the scenes, and we have a bit of a disagreement on this. I do like the song Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. I think it's a cute track. I think it's fun. I think it's silly as a kid's song that's a little naughty and a little cheeky. Perfectly fine song. I have lots of fond memories of... Uh, hearing that song on the bus when I was a kid and we'd all get like, you know, whipped up into a frenzy because uh, we were middle schoolers and we thought the track was hilarious and, you know, so on and so forth. Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer, though, this particular rendition is, is very strange. I'm actually surprised to find out once I listened to more of their music that After Romeo was just simply like a boy band. Because given the vocal rendition that they perform on this track, as well as the haircuts that they have, uh, I actually thought they were like an emo pop band and that eventually like this track would bust into like, you know, these hard rocking, like My Chemical Romance guitars and just like go flying. Uh, but unfortunately it doesn't do that. I, I wish it did because I feel like it would have made it so much worse, but in a, in a good way. Uh, but basically this is the most chilling, frightening, scary, and creepy rendition. Uh, however, I, I feel like the song falls horrifically short of achieving any of those things, but clearly that's what they're shooting for. <laughs> Doing this really slow, depressing, dramatic rendition of the track as if like uh, everyone's in danger and uh, the, the, the reindeer are, are a threat to everyone's life and so on and so forth. It's, it's, it's just, God, it's just so slow and it's just so... It's trying so hard to be passionate, and I just do not, I, I just don't get it. I feel like the, uh, the emotional direction of this track is <laughs> just terribly misplaced and uh, very far off the mark. So, um, yeah, this, this was unbearable to listen to, especially once I had realized, like, wow, this is not going to progress into anything else. This is just going to one-dimensionally just carry the same vibe and sound throughout the whole track. Uh, with these really boring, melodramatic emo vocals uh, that I don't care for at all, that are just really awful, really nasally, can't stand the singing on this track at all. And um, it, it, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm over this one. I'm over it. I'm, I'm really over it. Moving on from there, uh, this track comes from the legendary, or it's, it's a pretty popular 80s compilation of a, a popular artist at the time, doing a variety of renditions of a lot of different Christmas songs. But the one track that I want to single out on this compilation over here is the version uh, of Santa Baby that Madonna did on this uh, compilation. Now, truth be told, never been a huge fan of the song Santa Baby, never really been big into the track, mostly because uh, I feel like the song is really annoying and patronizing in, in a sexual way. It's sort of like uh, meant to appeal to guys who think women singing or talking or in baby voices is sexy. Like, oh, you want something for Christmas? You know, something like that where it's like you're really putting on this annoying 
baby talk affectation like oh yeah i love it when women talk like babies like that to me that's not appealing at all like anybody sort of uh embodying or impersonating like a baby or a child or whatever is is really kind of creepy to me um you know and and you know no fetish shaming here i get that there are some people that uh, uh enjoy that sort of thing uh, as long as it's adults and it's consensual, that's that's whatever, I guess. Uh, but to sort of hear it embodied in song, to me, is really annoying. And uh, Madonna actually only turns the baby voice up in her own rendition over here. So uh, Madonna essentially uh, uh, r really kind of like increasing the baby voice factor of this song tenfold, uh, going full, full baby voice, literally infantile. Uh, the way that she's singing on this track. I'm surprised she didn't throw a goo goo or a gaga in there. Uh, of course, the novelty, ritzy jazz instrumentation uh, is still there in the back as it is with the original. So, uh, yeah, just uh, another uh, annoying baby voiced version of Santa Baby that I just. Uh, <laughs> You're coming down the chimney tonight. Wow, wow. That uh, I just. Uh, Cannot stand whatsoever. So, yeah, it's it. get it out of here. Get it out of here. Oh, God. This next one. Jesus. You know, I, I've never been a big Maroon 5 guy, mostly because I find a lot of their music to be really uh, uppity, buttery, overly smooth, and uh, obnoxious. Uh, however, I'm actually surprised with the direction they took on this uh, new version of, uh, or not brand new, but obviously newer, uh, this newer version of Happy Christmas War is Over. Now, I do like the song, the original, quite a bit. Beautiful track. I do like the idea that during the holiday season, we should try to think of the well-being of humanity and the world at large. But uh, Maroon 5's rendition of this track is maybe one of the most uninspired that I've ever heard in my entire life. I mean, I know that the song is good. I get that the tune is good. But that doesn't mean that the song should literally do all the work for you and you essentially phone in the most boring and lackluster and just completely devoid of any and all passion version I've ever heard in my entire life. I mean, Adam Levine typically is putting a little bit of something, laying down a little bit of something on the vocals, uh, even if I don't really care for his vocal style. It seems like he's at least trying. Uh, over here, Happy Christmas War is over. It just really kind of feels like the band are, what, like fulfilling a contractual obligation or something? I don't know. It's like they're recording the song at gunpoint, and this is like the 150th take they've done of the track, and we're like, we're tired of playing it now, please don't make us play it anymore. Like, this is just such, uh, again, I'll say the word uninspired rendition of the track. There's literally no extra bells and whistles or anything. There's no grandiosity to it. Uh, the bass instrumentation is very dull and colorless and generic and boring. It's like they really tried to do as little as possible just to get the basic, most basic, most plain version of this song out and recorded and, I don't know, available for sale or stream, I guess. So, uh, yeah, awful, awful, boring rendition. Uh, moving on from there. Ugh! Ugh! Yeah, uh, the Duck Dynasty family, uh, the Robertson family, Duck the Halls. Um, yeah, ap apparently the Duck Dynasty family has tried their hand at some Christmas music. And uh, there is a rendition of Baby It's Cold Outside uh, to their name on this record. I mean, not only is that just a little bit of an annoying song in and of itself. I mean, I think the song gets a bit of... Uh, a nasty rap. I think people go uh, a, a little hard on the song with the, it's dated gender politics and, and I get it, but I don't think the sentiment of the original song is quite as nefarious as a lot of people paint it out to be. However, um, I, I wouldn't say throwing the duck dynasty guys into the mix on this one uh, really helps this song's case. Um, yeah, the, the vocals on this thing suck. The, the instrumentation is generic. It's novelty as hell. If you're not into Duck Dynasty, if you're not the most hardcore Duck Dynasty fan imaginable, 
th there's really no reason to listen to or enjoy this at all. I um, I am uh, really mad that um, I've been exposed to this before I died. So uh, I, I wish I could have gone through life uh, without ever having <laughs> heard this. <laughs> but we're here now, so uh, and hopefully you guys uh, find it in you to suffer along with me when you try this uh, awful version yourselves, where uh, the interactions uh, between the, the male and the female protagonists uh, on this version are, are pretty awkward and terrible, and um, yeah, it's, it's just like really cringy acting, I guess, uh, because I, I could barely even call it singing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. I, I just want to erase this from my memory as soon as possible. Hopefully skipping over to the next track sooner rather than later helps me do that. And uh, finally, uh, She and Him with uh, a version off of their Christmas party album of the song. Melikalikimaka is the thing to say. Why <laughs> on Christmas Day? Um, you know, honestly, Melikalikimaka is not really a song that... Uh, enters in my head much when I think of Christmas music. I mean, it is a legit, decent Christmas song. Um, I've heard different versions of it that are pretty good. Uh, nothing against it. You know, I, I think it's actually pretty dope that uh, uh, in the midst of uh, America's fetishization of Hawaiian instrumentation, uh, we somehow got a very popular uh, Christmas Hawaiian music <laughs> fusion out of it. Um, because if, if you do remember, there was a time... Uh, uh, during the mid-century in America where uh, uh, Hawaiian music was very much a popular novelty on compilation records and so on and so forth. Uh, so um, I, 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 ne I never really think of this song all that often. You know, not a terrible song by any means. Uh, cute, you know, even if I do think it is based on a, a, a huge, like, gentrification of what Hawaiian music is. Like it's, it's definitely, a <laughs> it's definitely gentrified Hawaiian music uh, at the very least. But, uh, still I, I generally, I think it's a pretty cute track. Uh, however, is she and him's rendition? Ah, why, why? Like, uh, you know, there, there are so many she and him songs that just baffle me in terms of like, why do they sound like this? Like, Zoe Deschanel's vocals are so foghorny and... <laughs> like, there, there's not really a strong melody being carried. It's very weak. Uh, but usually, M. Ward does a pretty good job of at least keeping the instrumentation a little colorful and fun and, you know, with a cool vintage sheen on it, but that doesn't even happen on this track. Uh, the guitars, uh, the plucky guitars on this thing are just really, really syrupy and lost in this haze of reverb. They sound almost spectral. It's like I'm listening to uh, the, like the Ghost of Christmas Past's version of Melikalikimaka. It's, it's like I'm listening to, uh, the, the song died, and I'm listening to it call from beyond the grave. <laughs> <laughs> like, they killed me, Malaka Um, yeah, th this is, uh, th this is, like, a really terrible rendition of this song. The guitars are so dull and gray and flat. It doesn't put me in the Christmas spirit at all, and neither do the vocals. Like, there's nothing cheery or uplifting or feel good about the song of this track. Uh, everything about it is so plain and uninspired. Um, to, to me, this is like, to, this is like a weird, weird uh, obsession with America's past, like popular music past, but it's, it's like Zoe and M. Ward don't really have like, I don't know what, I don't, I don't know what they're missing something. They don't have what they need to recreate it with any kind of accuracy or, uh, reinvent it in a way where it sounds bright and exciting and cool. It's like it really misses the sound and the aesthetic of America during a certain period in, in time, but it wants to be really polite and agreeable. It's like a MAGA hat stuffed into an NPR tote bag uh, is essentially what this song feels like to me. And uh, <laughs> But then you have to throw the Hawaiian element into it. So I guess a MAGA hat on top of a one of those wiggly 
dashboard Hawaiian hula girl pieces of tchotchka, and then you throw that into an NPR tote bag. And uh, yeah, that's, that's essentially what we're looking at here. Everyone, I'm going to leave it at that. That is my list of five awful Christmas songs. I cannot go through any more Christmas songs right now. I apologize, but hey, you know what? Next year, we'll, uh, we'll trip through five more together and we'll have a fun time. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. La, 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 love you. Uh, over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Christmas music uh, forever.